Now, where are you from? Southfield, Michigan. That's right outside Detroit. Is that considered a suburb of Detroit? Yeah, it is. Okay. To Detroiters. But, I mean, I moved to Rochester, like, which is way an actual suburb. It's completely different. So, like, Rochester is completely white. You almost don't feel welcome a little bit compared to Southfield, where it's like you see so many familiar faces among it's black people. So give me the history here so yeah. we can avoid confusion. Born in De where, where are you born at? Southfield. Southfield. Mm -hmm. Then where did you move to and what age? I moved to Rochester Hills when I was 14. Okay. And then you stayed there? Mm -hmm. I've been there ever since. Basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't ever go back to Southfield? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Now, what was the reason for the move? Uh, I think we were just trying to get lower rent or something. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay, and that was at uh, in your teenage years. Yep, and that was when I was 14. Now, uh, how far is Detroit from Southfield? How far is Detroit from Rochester? Detroit and Southfield are like 10 minutes away. Oh, okay. And then Detroit and Rochester is like 40 minutes away. Okay. Now, what was it like for you growing up in Southfield, and what was it like for you growing up in Rochester? Paint that picture for us. Well, it, like, Rochester and Southfield is, like, two completely different things. So, like, when you're in Southfield, I feel like that's kind of where I, like, got all my style from, how I talk, everything. Like, I can't even break away from being... Like, when you live in Detroit, there's a thing as a Southfield nigga. So, I mean, that's, like, down to how you dress, how you talk, and everything. So, when you're in Southfield, everybody care about material. Like, you used to get roasted if you ain't have on a certain polo, true religion, all that. So, when I moved to Rochester, it's, like, culture shock because... Nobody gave a fuck about any of that. Everybody was white. They just, I mean, I'm pretty sure they wore, like, the same shit all week. Mm. Never, like, I never got roasted for, all right, that's a lot. I have, once I got black friends in Rochester, I got roasted for, like, the clothes because we all came from, like, a place similar to Southfield or Detroit. But in Rochester, nobody cares. It's like, there's no popular people. It's just completely different. Like, there's no hierarchy in there. Mm. Which did, which did you like? Did you like the materialistic side of things and the style, or did you like the you could wear something for a week and get away with it type of thing? See, I mean, I like being acknowledged for how I'm dressed, so I would probably say a part of me cares for the materialistic, but, like, when you can't afford it, I guess you would prefer Rochester. But me, personally, I prefer the Southfield, kind of, because I like to be nice. Now, it sounds like uh, there was some poverty. Mm-hmm. Uh, you grew up in poverty? Not poverty. It's just I didn't have all the Jordans. I didn't have all the polos. Like, at one point, I was still in polo so I could be it's up to par with everybody else who was at school. Mm. Was it a rough upbringing? No. Nah, no, nah, it wasn't rough at all. Not a rough upbringing? No, nah, not at all. They would be offended if I said it was rough on camera. As a kid, did you get into trouble? Uh, well, if you count being a teenager, not as like a child, but a teenager, technically. What was the most serious thing you got into? Well, when I was still in clothes, I got arrested at the mall. So that was the most serious thing I got into. Like I was, I got, I, like I got the whole handcuff, spent like a little 15 minutes in jail, and then my dad had to come pick me up. Arrested for what? Still in polo. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was still in polo. I had like a whole duffel bag full of polo. I was like giving out polo to my whole family, like, and they ain't really thinking anything of it at first until I got caught. Oh, so this was uh, not the first time you got. This is not the first time you were doing this when you got caught. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that wasn't even the last time. How'd you get caught? You didn't get caught before this. How'd uh, you get caught on this particular occasion? Well, the reason I got caught, because, like, you know how when you first start, somebody's there who brought you along. So, basically, I felt like I should bring one of my niggas as, like, a coming-of-age kind of thing. So, I brought my friend Bryce. And he ain't never, like, maneuvered with me before. So, we went to uh, this. And we went to a different place, completely different. We never went before. It's called 12 Oaks Mall. So, we, we actually, well, me, I was doing most of the stealing. I went to, like, this is, like, this is how the relative of the times. I went to like Hollister, Abercrombie, and all these places. I actually hit like a big league. I had like a bag full of clothes. Then my obsession with polo got me because 
I was walking past Lord and Taylor and my friend, he was like, they got polo hats in there. So I go in there and I was like, I grabbed a polo hat and then there's like a lady, she asked me why I needed help. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I go to the uh, the dressing room, try it on. Then I think I went to the bathroom with it and I put it in one of my bags. And I think I saw a camera in my like dumbass 13 year old, like look right into it. But like thought she didn't see me. So I tried to go out the store. And like, as soon as I went out the store, there's this white girl running out to me like, hey, 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 come here, come with me. And then we went out to the uh, loss prevention. And then she called the police. And that's how I ended up in cuffs. Shocked you? Surprised? Yeah, no, yeah I was surprised. I thought I was like the best thief at that time, but I obviously wasn't. Uh, you were uh, a teenager still? Yeah, 13. So uh, it's a juvenile offense. Yeah. Um, did a charge stick with that or anything? Uh, no, it, it was like off my record once I turned 17. Okay. Uh, but I guess you were found guilty of it? Yeah, guilty. You were? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, was, what was the actual charge for something like that? What's like the uh, professional... I mean, you were caught for stealing. Is it called something though? When I just call it like larceny. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I didn't have to like do no juvie or nothing. I did like counseling with a dude. It, it was like him and my dad, and that was it. This was the first time your parents found out about your stealing ways. Yeah. What was their reaction? I mean, it was like you know his regular upset. You know, we all shed tears, but we better from it. I see. Yeah. But it wasn't the last. No, nah, it wasn't the last. Because I had to do community service after that. And I'm not going to lie. This is like the first time I made it to because I'm here. And I'm, it's a long time ago. But like when I worked at the Salvation Army, my obsession with polo was this great that I like stole polo from the Salvation Army. And I still got some of it to this day. No, nah, I do. Do you still like polo this much? No, I don't. That's what's crazy. I think I, like, got it all out of my system. Hmm. Now, uh, okay, uh, you weren't, your family wasn't in poverty, but you weren't able to afford everything you want. You have mm -mm. had to, at some point, feel like stealing uh, clothes because you couldn't get them, couldn't afford them. Well, yourself. I don't think it wasn't because I couldn't afford them. Because at first, it was just, it was just something to do after school. And then it just turned into that. It wasn't like a poverty thing or like we couldn't afford it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Um, all right. Well, then I, I take that back. Um, if it wasn't that and the stealing stopped at some point, mm -hmm. um, did it turn into something else? Because I know a vice like this, mm -hmm. especially when there's adrenaline, am I going to get caught? Am I not? You know, uh, it's more than just... Because you just said, like, it was affordable. It wasn't like you couldn't afford it. So it came from... Well, I couldn't afford it in abundance. I probably had, like, one polo myself. But I would have rather had 40 and, like, started on everybody and wore a new one every day. I see. Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes people steal for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like you wanting 40 and not... And, but you could get one, but you'd rather have 40. Yeah. So there's a, a reason to steal. But then sometimes stealing, it's a sport. There's adrenaline. There's a rush to it. It becomes more than just, I want 40. It becomes, can I get away with this? Can I get away with that? What else can I get away with next? Mm -hmm. um, and then it can become a form of addiction. Was that the case in this scenario too? Or no, it was just you wanted 40 polos instead of one. I think it's a mixture of both because I'm pretty sure at some point, well, I probably wanted more than 40. That's why I got caught. So it's greedy. a mixture of both. You got greedy. Yeah. Hey, that's how a good thing falls. Now, uh, do you think this vice, this addiction, this rush, when this adrenaline you feel when you go through the motions of stealing something, do you think it turned into something else? Because it can happen. Uh, I mean, since it's like rooted in materialism, I think it's just placed in my work ethic, work ethic of wanting to have nice things, period. I so I, mean, I get that same feeling when I like getting accomplishment in music or just simply buying stuff with the money that I earned. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Uh, reason why I ask is because sometimes it can turn into maybe gambling or it can turn into 
something else, something else, something else. You know, these vices can change forms. Yeah. So just curious. Um, okay. Uh, as a kid, what kind of kid were you in class going to school? Um, when I first started school, I mean, I, I feel like everybody started school. They were like smart, had all A's. I think once I got to middle school, I kind of just stopped caring. And it's more, that's when I'm more so cared about just being like fresh, having all the nice clothes, messing with females. And I mean, that's when I started like being late to class, like severely out or just not going, period. So, I mean, bit of a class clown, bit of not going to class. Mm. Yeah, I didn't really care about school. Okay, so I don't mean to bring the stealing back up, but when you did do the stealing, this was when you were in Southfield mm -hmm. or when you were in Southfield. Rochester? Okay. Two questions here. One, do you think if you were in Rochester, you think you would have done the stealing? No, I probably wouldn't have because I wouldn't have got roasted for not having polo or anything like that. And two, brings up my next question. There's a debate in school when it comes to school uniforms. Yeah. Some people think if you have school uniforms and everybody's in the same thing, Stuff like you went through, stealing for clothes, trying to be fresh, style, this, that, and the third. These are some things that may not happen because everybody's one, right, yeah. so to speak. Um, what do you feel, and there's a flip side to the debate, which I'll also discuss in a second. What do you feel about school uniforms? I do mean, you think school uniforms should be necessary because of things that you went through and things that you've experienced, trying to be fresh, trying to be hip, trying to be with the trends? No, it's, I mean, I had a school uniform. You did have a school uniform? Yeah, so you could wear, it wasn't like a strict uniform. Like They had a uniform that they issued out to everybody that had like a school logo on it, but you could wear red, black, or white. And like black or beige pants and like white shoes. But it could but, be any company. It wasn't like you bought Yeah, there was no restriction. restriction. Just, kids are going to find a way to roast. So I don't think a uniform would ever help that. Because it would be the shoes or the pants or whatever. Even if it was a strict form of uniform, let's say everybody buys it from this place. Uh, it's all the same thing. It could be red, white, or blue, but it's all the same red, white, or blue. It's not like polo red or Reebok red or, you know, Tommy Hilfiger red or whatever the case may be. No, you know, stop it. You don't think so? Because, I mean, you, you could just shift it to something else. Like, all right, he doesn't have an iPhone. He doesn't have... Mm. He doesn't have like black earrings or anything, or he doesn't wear a certain hairstyle. Like, it's, there's no way to stop kids from being kids. Like, no matter what, it's gonna happen. So even if even if you have school uniforms, people will still be able to see if you're rich, poor, middle class. Yeah, there's no way to hide it. I guess from kids. Now, uh, speaking on that, another person had told me one time. Even if everybody did have uniforms, some people may not be able to afford uh, an amount of uniforms compared to somebody else. So somebody's uniform might look a little dingier than another's. Yeah. They wash it more than another's, and that would be a way to tell. Yeah, it's so many. It's like it's too intricate to ever get rid of it. So I mean, I think the best way would like the Rochester way. Just there's no uniform. You could just wear whatever you want. You mentioned you were a class clown. Yeah. Were you the class clown? Because sometimes class clowns can just be jokes. Mm -hmm. It's just fun. Some class clowns, uh, there's bullying involved. It, it's more than just jokes. Were you just the fun uh, class clown or were you the bully class clown? Uh, I probably was just funny. I, I never bullied anybody. You're just funny, and then, I mean, just defensive, like, where you wrote somebody just because they said something to you, but it's never gone, like, past bullying. What about rapping? Did you do that in school? Uh, surprisingly, no, I didn't. I didn't. I don't even, like, freestyling or anything like that, so that's, I never, ever rapped in school. So that came after school? Well, I was rapping during school. Like, I would play you my SoundCloud, or I would people would discover it. But like, you know, like how people beatbox on the lunch table. And okay, like, but you you were involved in rap. You just weren't physically like battling somebody on the yeah it was on the like on that. the campus or something like no, that. No, nothing like that. But you were rapping though. You were making songs. You were writing. Mm -hmm. You were doing that thing. Um, when did that start for you? How young? 
What age? What grade? Uh, I was either 14 or 15 when I was in 10th grade. Because, I mean, I had a teacher named, I'm not, I'm not going to say her name. That would be messed up. But I had a teacher, and I thought she was attractive. So in order to get her attention, I was going to make a song about how I wanted to smash. <laughs> and that's how I started rapping. And then we, me and my brother, we were doing, like, parodies of popular songs at the time. And then I guess he peeped, like, all right, every time we joking, you kind of get serious and, like, it gets too sweet for it to just be a parody. So that's how I ended up writing music on my own. It started with having wanting to have sex with the teacher, though. Yeah. Now, uh, you didn't do the battle stuff. Did you? Nah. Did you try talent shows? No. Nah. Didn't do that either. Yeah, you know, I ain't a fan of competitions or nothing. Didn't perform at a pep rally or anything like that. No. Nah. I mean, I wasn't at the school where I would get asked for that. Mm. Yeah. I see. What about now? Uh, since graduating, have you been asked to perform at a pep rally at a high school? I, w I have been asked, but they were upset that I charged. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not something I would want to do. Especially, I don't like, and I also don't like really performing, like, clean music. So, that was the thing. Now, uh, you graduated. Yeah. After you graduated high school, uh, was there thoughts on furthering the education? Well, my parents had thoughts of furthering education. They even, she, my mom paid for my community class, community college class. She paid for one semester. I was going to go. I did go. I went for a day, and then I dropped out because, I mean, I just, I've known the whole time I didn't want to go to college, but I was just doing, doing it to appease them. But, I mean, I went for one day, and I dropped out. What was their reaction to that? Uh, I don't think, I think she found out when I actually did another interview in Detroit. So she didn't know for a long time. So did you fake it like you were going to school? Or it was just something that wasn't talked about and she just assumed you were going to school? Both. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think after like the first semester, she was asking questions. But I mean, it was just, you should just know that I wasn't going to school. She found out through another interview? Yeah. She was, she, she was mad that I, I only went for one day. I think she thought I went for the whole semester. Hindsight 2020, looking back at yourself, uh, was that the best decision? Definitely, because I would have wasted a lot of money if I would have stayed in school compared to just investing in myself. Somebody watching this, let's say they're a kid, they yeah. just graduated high school. And they're thinking about the next step in their life. Let's say they have a passion for music, right? Whatever it may be. doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be a rapper. They just have a passion for music. Do you tell a person, and circumstances could be different here, so keep that in mind, but just general advice. You tell a kid with a passion for music after graduating high school, go straight into the music career choice, the career path. Or do you tell a person if they can continue their education and do music simultaneously, do both? Uh, I would What's just go straight advice? for the music because you just, I mean, if you just go into school, you're going to end up wasting time and diverting your attention. And I mean, it kind of questions your faith in your music. So I would just go straight for the music. What community college was it that you uh, had attended? Oakland Community College. That is, I guess, I think that's like the biggest community college in Michigan, but they couldn't contain me, so. That was that. Yeah, that was that. <laughs> what about as far as jobs? Did you work at all during your upbringing? Uh, I didn't work until I graduated high school. And when I graduated, I was working outside. Like I was doing like door to door, knocking on doors, trying to get people to like sign up for window leads or whatever. I don't even know how to explain it. That's, I mean, I don't work there anymore. I got fired, so. That sounds dangerous, the knocking door to door part. Yeah. It was, and, and it's like winter, Michigan winter time, so it was cold as fuck. Did people open up their doors and, and talk to you? All the time, like every day is never a day where like nobody opens their door to talk to you. You would be surprised, I mean, people in post do everything, so yeah, they open the doors, they have a whole conversation with you. People, I'm going inside people's houses, I mean, you would be surprised, but. Anybody ever pull a gun on you? Thankfully not, because that would have been the day I quit. You did get fired. Yeah, I did get fired. Because? 
Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure like failure to produce. Cause I mean, I can't even really explain the job that I did. Cause usually when I went outside, I mean, I would knock on a few doors and then it'd be so cold. I would just go somewhere and go inside. So yeah, I did get fired though. Was that a tough job? Uh, I would have to say so. Because trying to convince people to, like you just show up one day like, yo, I'm trying to get you some windows or I'm trying to get you to get a meeting with a salesperson so you can get some windows. And it's like, you just show up on a random ass day. I don't, I'm not a lot of people going for that. Mm. Was that the only job you had or you had other jobs? Uh, once I had a bunch of those jobs. Okay. Because me, my brother, he's good at it. So I was just working with him and I would just follow him from job to job. But eventually we had a manager that always fired us. So just so he could bring us to the next company that he worked for. But I mean, after I did all that, I was working in retail. And then the store closed, so I'm like, yeah. What store? Uh, it's a store called Carson's. Now, uh, any crazy stories dealing with any of those jobs you mentioned? Anything that happened out of the norm? Uh, I mean, when you when you doing like canvassing, you're gonna meet a bunch of crazy ass people. So like, it used to be a dude, and like none of them motherfuckers got cars, technically me and my brother would be like the only people with a car so we would end up giving people rides to work and there was this white dude every day in order for him to do his job he would be drunk as fuck and i think it was like one day he just came in drunk he got in our van and he was like drunk slurring he like yeah bro and then he like calling this nigga all kind of shit so i mean that's the craziest shit i'm not, I'm not a fan of co-workers period not nah. but yeah he's a drunk motherfuckers Different people from everywhere. It was niggas that used to sell soap or some shit that we end up working with. They tell you stories. Now, that sounds like another hustle. It sounds like you could be charging these people like an Uber. Uh, take them to work? Yeah, to take them to work. Yeah, I mean, usually, like, in Detroit, you I mean, we just throw me gas. We get you there. And we all trying to go to the same place, get some money. So, I mean, I guess we weren't really thinking about it like that. Now, what about family? All right, uh, both parents in your life? Yeah. Good terms with each? Yeah. Together or separated? They are together. They are together? Yeah, they are together. You don't see that too often these days. No, you don't. How long have they been together for? Damn. Uh. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? Uh, no, nah, not like 30 years. Yeah, I'll say 30 years because they're about 50 and they've been together since they've been 20. What do you think their secret is? on staying together that long? I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I mean, they work well together. Any siblings? Yeah, hey, my brother. Just one brother. Just one brother. Yeah. Where are you on the uh, the ladder? I'm Oldest, the youngest. Youngest? Uh-huh. Anyone else in your family do music aside yourself? Uh, Prince. Like in my, not in my immediate family, but like my family tree, Prince is a part of that. Prince is a part of it. Yeah, he's a Nelson and I'm a part of the Nelson tree. Uh, how far down on that uh, tree are you from him? Well, his, his dad is my granddad's brother. So that, I mean, that far, I guess. I, I'm not sure how the first, second, third cousin shit work, but hmm. he definitely a part of the family. Cause I got, I got cousins that look just like him and shit. Really? Yeah, exactly, like Prince. Uh, any perks since you are related to him no. throughout your life <laughs> that no, you experienced? Uh, I mean, other than I got to be a Jehovah Witness because, I mean, it was a part of the family. That's about it. And you consider that a perk. Never seen him in concert, never got a chance to go to the uh, famous studio in, in uh, nope, Minnesota? Nope, I, I haven't even been to Minnesota, dog. I wish I had. Okay, aside from him, anybody else in your family do music? Uh, no, it's just... Just you? No, I got a cousin named Moet that do music, but that's just, that's it. It's just me and her. And what does she do? She made music. She rap. Oh, she raps also. Yeah. Uh, is it a competitive nature between you guys? Supportive nature between you guys? Have you had a chance to collab? Uh, mm She's like way older, so I mean, I don't really talk to her like that. I just know that she does music. So I mean, it's like, it's none of those things. Ah. Yeah. 
Now, what do your parents think about your music career? Uh, I'm actually surprised that they like it, but they like it a lot. Like, I would almost say that they're my biggest fans, and like, they they super supportive. Yeah. Supportive right away, or did they have to warm up to it? Uh, supportive right away, I would say. Now, they actually like the music. They're not yeah. just supportive of the career. They actually like the music. Yeah, like at any given time, you walk into my house, you're going to hear Baby Mark playing on the TV, on the speaker, like anything. What about the cussing? Uh, uh, so far, I mean, I think the only person that doesn't like my cussing technically is my grandma, but, you know, it won't be me. Have they had a chance to see you perform live yet? Uh, my dad has, my mom has. What was his reaction? Uh, he said he didn't like all the jumping around, but he liked, he liked the performance. Because there was other people at the show that we threw, so like I was hyped, everybody was hyped. We was all jumping around like kids and shit. Mm. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, okay? Uh, and you are Baby Mark, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, <laughs> what, okay, knowing what you know now, what would bigger Baby Mark <laughs> tell little baby Mark. Uh, okay, what's one thing you would tell yourself? Hindsight 2020, living the life that you've lived thus far. What's one thing you would tell your younger self? Hmm. What would you have advised yourself? Uh, you know what? I would probably just tell myself to, uh, like, as soon as you graduate, I mean, fuck going to college still, like, it was like a sliver of doubt in my mind whether I would actually do music. So, I mean, just remove all doubt from your mind and go extremely hard on music. Maybe even drop out when you were 14 or something and go do music. In high school, I'm like, I tell myself that.